Hey, welcome to our presentation on writing an effective personal statement presented by the team here at Newman University. My name is David Handy. I'm Senior Student Recruitment Manager at the University. As you'll see from my profile here, I've got some fairly significant experience in the secondary school world. So I've got a lot of experience as Head of Sixth Form and Head of Careers in sending students off to university and helping them with their applications. If you've got any questions about anything I talk about today or indeed anything about the wider university application process, then please feel free to drop me an email via, via the email address that I've listed here d.handy at newman.ac.uk. I really look forward to hearing from you. So in this presentation, we're going to cover an overview of the UCAS application process. We're going to cover what is a personal statement. We're going to look at some myths surrounding them, how to best structure it, and also some really good practice for you as well. So to start with the application process, you'll be registering with UCAS in order to make your application. All applications um, to the undergraduate program are made via UCAS. Okay, so if you're thinking about progressing to university, for instance, in September 2021, you'll be able to apply um, and actually send your application from September 2020. But the actual window for you to go in and start completing your application uh, is actually from May 2020. So you can go in and do this. If you're part of a school or college community, they will probably be giving you something called a buzzword, which links your application to them and enables them to attach your reference and to give you some guidance with it. If you're applying as an individual candidate, I know some of you are perhaps coming back into learning, um, then you can apply and you have to list a referee that you want to write your reference. It's normally an academic reference, but if you've been in employment for quite some time, then a previous employer would certainly be acceptable for that. In terms of sending these, if you're applying for Oxford or Cambridge, medicine, veterinary or dentistry, then that would need to be sent by the 15th of October. The e date of equal consideration for all the universities is the 15th of January. OK, if you meet that deadline, universities will be looking at your application. If you send it after that, they can't guarantee that all universities will be in a position to consider them. OK, those of you in schools and colleges, I would really encourage you to work with any deadlines that are set within your institutions because sometimes your references have to be attached and so on and so forth. So do work with any institutional deadlines you've got. Once that form has been sent, you'll be receiving your offers. So conditional offers will ask for a particular amount of UCAS points or certain grades from some universities. You may receive an unconditional offer. So this could be because you've already got your qualifications or because that university is making what we call unconditionals, um, by, whereby you know, there isn't a stipulation upon your, uh, your, your prior learning. In some cases, we may offer alternative programmes of study. And sadly, a small number, we will be declining um, you from those courses. Once you've got all your offers back, you make your firm an insurance choice. So the firm choice should be the university and course you really want to go to. And hopefully the entry requirements broadly in line with uh, with your predicted grades or although that indeed those that you already achieved. And your insurance choice is just that it is your first backup. So it should be a university and of course you'd be comfortable going to if perhaps you didn't get the grades to progress to your firm choice. If you get no offers or you choose to withdraw from the, uh, the courses that you applied for from February, you can go into a scheme called UCAS Extra. OK, and in Extra, you go to universities on an individual basis to uh, to make your application. So say, for instance, you're looking at a course in psychology. Uh, you've been rejected from all the other places you applied to. You come to us at Newman through UCAS Track and we um, we consider whether or not you'd be suitable for the course. If we say yes, great, you would be in conditional upon whatever conditions are attached to your offer. If we say no, then you go back into that pool and you can go to another university and ask the same question. So you'd be getting your results during the summer, uh, typically in August. Um, following that, we'll be confirming places. If for whatever reason you haven't quite got the grades um, that you'd hoped for, there'll be opportunities through clearing. So clearing is a programme where universities can match courses they've still got vacancies for with students who aren't yet placed. So what is the personal statement? It is your opportunity to tell us as universities about your suitability for the course that you hope to study, where you'll be demonstrating your enthusiasm, your passion and commitment for the subject and really make yourself stand out from the crowd. OK, because not every uh, degree course will interview. All right. That's something really important for you to consider. This may be your only opportunity for you to, to talk in some respect to the admissions tutor. 
The personal statement is 4,000 characters or 47 lines, whichever comes first, where you can evidence that you've researched the course, that you've got good independent study skills, that you've got motivation and commitment for the subject and a real passion showing through. We want to see that you can write. Like I say, this may be the only opportunity we have to see your work um, prior to making you an offer for university. So do make yourself stand out. And we want to see things that uh, things that you do well and perhaps the areas that you want to develop when you're at university as well. So when we think of when do we need to start our statement, if we're looking at applying for university for September 2021, then I would certainly be encouraging you um, perhaps during the summer of 2020 to start drafting this. I know many of you in schools and colleges will have deadlines for a first draft prior to that. Um, if you're looking perhaps to be applying later in the year, uh, you know, if you're watching this video and we're well in the autumn, I would just encourage you to make a start as soon as possible on doing so. So how to structure your personal statement? OK, be thinking about this. We have an introduction. We'll have if you're currently in study, I would suggest a paragraph about each of the subjects that you're currently studying and how that links and the very transferable skills link through to what it is you want to study at university. Uh, we would then move on to looking at other achievements, you know, perhaps work experiences, uh, other opportunities, things that you've done before you come to a short conclusion. So your introduction, we want to have the fundamental reasons for why you want to study that particular course, why that subject out of the 50,000 or so that are out there, and how did your enthusiasm and interest for that course develop? Then, like I said, when we're moving on to the next paragraph or paragraphs, this is where it will differ slightly. If perhaps you're on a programme where you're doing three or four subjects at the moment, A-levels or B-techs, I would suggest writing a paragraph about each one, talk about the specific subject, specific skills that you've got or transferable skills that could link to the thing that you want to apply for university for. If you're doing a course at the moment where one of your subjects is broadly in line with the thing you want to progress with at university, I would say make that your first, uh, the first of these subject paragraphs. If you're on a course at the moment, so for instance, a triple award BTEC in, let's say, sport, you could write just the one long paragraph. Or indeed, if you're coming back from, from employment, potentially, then you may want to, to write a paragraph there where we're really demonstrating you know, your knowledge of the course you're applying for, but also the skills that you've got relating to that course. Um, perhaps any further reading or research that you've done as well. I think that's really important. Moving on to the, the next paragraph. Um, after you've done your sort of subject um, related ones, we want to talk about other achievements. So perhaps if you're in a, a school or college environment, you might want to talk about work experiences. I appreciate those of you applying for 2021 may have had some difficulties with work experience owing to perhaps being cancelled because of the, uh, the coronavirus epidemic. Um, what I would suggest there is if you had work experience arranged previously, you could talk about that. Um, and that it was cancelled. You could also talk about perhaps any work that you've done um, you know, in community groups, perhaps if you've done volunteering within a school environment, all that sort of stuff would be quite useful if it links to what it is you're applying for at university. And if you can demonstrate um, some skills, I think are really important. Things like part time employment um, are good things that way if you've got transferable skills such as um, communication, problem solving, conflict resolution. All those sorts of things, you could talk about those. If perhaps you've taken a gap year or are planning to take a gap year, you could tell us a bit about that as well. When it comes to the conclusion, um, I would suggest by the time you get to this point, you're probably on line 42 or line 43 of that statement. So you'll only have a few lines left. OK, but do you know end on a high and it is your final chance to impress and stand out from the crowd as you know by summing up everything you've talked about through the rest of your statement. If your statement's too short, I would say actually it's easier to, to fill it up with things that maybe you'd forgotten about. But if it's too long um, and as someone who spent a lot of time advising, uh, advising students in a school setting, um, the, this is what, how I would suggest if you need to edit it down. Keep it to between five and eight key topics within perhaps those, those five or six paragraphs to communicate to the admissions tutor. If you've got work experience, I would suggest that's something really important to put in there. But if you find you're, you're quite a long way over, what I would do is speak to the person who's writing your reference and see if they will agree to cover some of your points within the reference. And that way, within both the statement and that reference, you've covered everything you want to tell them. I would suggest do write in a short and punchy style and avoid waffling. So what do I mean by that? 
Um, I see a lot of personal statements and sometimes it's as though someone's gone away and swallowed the English dictionary and thesaurus and they're using every long word under the sun because they feel they've got to. I would suggest it is a personal statement. While you're writing a fairly academic piece of writing, okay, we want your voice to shine through too. Okay, so don't necessarily be using words that perhaps you don't understand. And in terms of getting someone to proofread it, I think that's really important. So do consult teachers, advisors. You know, I know us as universities, we come out to, to schools and colleges to check those. Sometimes people bring them along to, to open day events as well. So it's interesting to be able to, to work with people on that, to give you the feedback. Uh, in terms of the amount of drafts I would be writing, I su suggest somewhere between 10 and 20 drafts will get you to the optimum personal statement. The first few, you're going to be making some fairly significant changes. But what I would say is after that, it's going to be a case of tweaking things, so perhaps sentence structures, the way it reads, perhaps moving the paragraph order around. So by the time you're sort of up to those later drafts, you're not completely rewriting it. So don't panic, folks which is why I would suggest do write it in a, in a word processor, prepare it offline, so a lot of Microsoft Word is a really good thing to be using. When we're thinking about putting together, I like to think of things um, as a, a bit of an ABC guide. So if you tell us the activity, so what you've done, that's good. If you can tell us the benefits of what skills it's given you, that's better, but the absolute best practice is where you're relating everything back to the course that you're choosing to apply for at university. What I would say is if you get a sheet of A4 or a sheet of A3 paper, you could potentially split it in, into four quarters. Okay, have one for the introduction, one about the course, one for extracurricular activities, and one for a conclusion. So those things we talked about earlier, and really you could start to do almost like an essay plan where you bullet point the different things that uh, you might want to cover. And then when you come to type up your draft, okay, as you go through, you just put a little tick next to each thing so you can see that you've covered all those thoughts that you're thinking about. Well, I'd say, you know, you could do this plan over a period of days. So something else will occur to you. If you're anything like me, you know, you'll have ideas occur to you all sorts of times of the day. So you can just add it onto that document. And I think that's going to be a really useful tip for you. So think about some do's and don'ts. Do rethink about what skills or qualities you're going to need um, to demonstrate for the course that you're thinking about. So I've got a couple of examples here for you. So teacher training, for instance, you might want to be looking at organisational skills, being adaptable showing your passion, communication skills, and enthusiasm for the subject, um, patience, teamwork, giving examples of all the times you've used these skills. Um, you know, and thinking on something slightly different, so for business management, you know, some of these are, are fairly similar. But uh, if you look through here, things like effective problem solving, you know, research and data analysis skills. So just think about the kind of things that your course at university is going to need you to do and try and demonstrate how you've been developing those either through your studies or perhaps you know through through your employment as well. What I would say is don't lie about any experiences, about work experience, hobbies, skills, books you've read. You know, certainly in a previous life, I, I've come across students who've been to university interviews and they've cited in their personal statement, you know, journal articles they've read and they've gone for interview and the person on the other side of the table has actually been the person who wrote those. Luckily, they genuinely had read them, but just be mindful of that. You know, you don't want to get caught out. I would say don't quote for the sake of quoting. It is a personal statement. You've only got those 4,000 characters or 47 lines to express your views as to why you should be allowed onto that course. So I would suggest it, it's probably not necessary for you to be quoting other people. You know, I, as you know, read a lot of personal statements. And the one that still comes up to this day, 20 odd years on, is uh, Tony Blair, education, education, education. There's probably between 30 and 40 characters that could be better used to further your argument as to things that you've done or skills that you've got. I would also be, be, be careful of exaggerating or using silly examples. So I call them X Factor auditions. So ever since playing with my dolls as a little girl, it's been my lifelong dream to become a teacher. I would just be wary with that. That doesn't really advance your argument very much as an opening statement i'd say it's quite weak um and be mindful of examples you've got from television as well so example here my passion for nursing grew from watching tv shows such as casualty and holby city that as a standalone is, is quite weak but if you were to then say the extra research and things that you'd gone on to do work experiences that would make it much stronger as part of an introduction Okay, so I'd love to meet this student and I, I really think it's a great opportunity as a statement to sell yourself in the most positive light. 
but be careful of perhaps pushing yourself a little bit too far and, and stretching the truth too far. I'd love to meet this student. And when I'm not working towards world peace, I enjoy learning languages from scratch, writing symphonies and playing a standard of football that Ronaldo can only dream about. Just be mindful. It's great to sell yourself in a positive light, but just don't push it that little bit too far. Spelling, punctuation and grammar, really important uh, throughout the whole application indeed, not just the personal statements. So just be mindful of having your, your spell check set to uh, the right version of English, so United Kingdom. And I would top tip from me, as you're drafting it, print it off or indeed sit there, read it out loud. OK, you might think well, that that's a bit strange, but read it out loud because you'll come across spelling mistakes. You'll certainly come across grammatical errors and perhaps places where you could improve your sentence structure. And that will give you the best reading personal statement. So in summary, some do's and don'ts for you. Um, you know, do mention your future aspirations. Do get feedback from others, those advisors, heads of sixth form, careers leads, parents, family members, um, people you've got who are maybe active in the profession that you want to go on to. You know, get them to have a read of it, get them to make some suggestions and take on board that feedback. I would suggest give yourself the most time you can to, to write it and edit it. And if you do get called for interview, do have swatted up on it the night before and be prepared to answer questions about things that are in your statement. I would say in terms of don'ts, I would avoid humour. Um, we know from when we're sending WhatsApps, when we're sending messages to our, our friends, sometimes humour can get a little bit lost. And I would suggest when you're writing your statement, do try and keep quite a, a straightforward academic tone in there. Okay, I would possibly avoid humour. Plagiarism, UCAS put every personal statement through a uh, through a checker. OK, so if there are a lot of sentences or paragraphs or indeed the whole thing copied from elsewhere, that will get flagged to your universities and they're not at liberty to consider your application if that's the case. Um, it definitely does happen. I've known a couple of students this happened to where perhaps they've uh, borrowed an older sibling's statement and copied significant amounts from it. So don't get caught out. And also it is a personal statement. We want to hear your voice. So don't maybe allow someone else to write it on your behalf. Uh, if you're applying to more than one university, do avoid mentioning uh, just the one uni in there, because it, if we're seeing other university names in there, we're going to know that perhaps uh, we're not your number one choice. And as I said, just be, be mindful of those things such as your spellings. So your to-do list, really go out there and research the courses that are available, use virtual open days, use the uh, information on the university websites, and indeed UCAS.com is a brilliant resource. Start creating those mind maps and drafts of your personal statement and really crack on with uh, your statements early. Give yourself plenty of time.